Hey, thanks for joining. I'm your host, Chris Gennaro. My co-host is Eric Risk, and today we have Will Lindsay from uh, Indian. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thank you. Hey, so uh, I know you guys haven't done, like your last studio album uh, from All Purity, it was in 2014. So I, we just wanted to check in on what you guys are doing currently. And, uh, you know, I know from Metal Archives, it didn't list you guys having a drummer. So I, I think let's just start there. Yeah, well, um, you know, since uh, Billy's suicide, uh, keeping the drum spot's been a little bit, uh, keeping someone in the drum spot's been a little tough for us. Uh, but we actually just started uh, playing with um, Brian Loudy from Weekend Nachos. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, we talked to him before, and then he had some personal stuff come up and uh, kind of disappeared. So we thought, all right, I guess he's not into it. And uh, then Primitive Man was in town doing some recording a month or two back, and uh, I went to go meet up and have some drinks with him. And uh, Brian's a friend of theirs as well, so we got reintroduced. And whatever his uh, he had the availability and interest, so yeah, so it's going great with him. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I said it's. Uh, you guys are pretty much the only people outside of the band and primitive man that knows that. So oh, breaking news. Breaking news. Excellent. I love it. So what well, are um I mean, do you have any plans yet? I mean, if this is all new, then I'm assuming you're just you just started to jam, but do you have like material ready to you know that you've been working on? Oh uh, we got I got we got a few risks we've been kicking around and um you know, we only jammed with Brian once so far. So it was more just kind of getting used to playing with each other. We're going to start working on some new material soon. Um, we've got some plans to do a split LP with Primitive Man, and then I guess a LP of our own as well at some point. I mean, it's uh, a lot's changed since uh, when we kind of quit playing, um, you know, seven years ago or whatever it was. Uh, you know, a couple of the guys, uh, Ron and Dylan, each have two kids now. And, we, you know, we all have day jobs, you know, we were all bartenders back then, so it's, uh, you know, it's it's probably going to take a little longer than it used to, but it's, you know, it's, it's happening, so. Excellent. So you guys are still all living in Chicago, right? Yeah. We're, uh, Dylan's out in the suburbs, but yeah, we're all still in the area. Okay. One, one of the, the things that I, I saw in, in looking at some of the interviews and stuff, was it look like when Indian went on hiatus, a lot of it had to do with this weird thing with Lord Mantis that happened? Oh, that had nothing to do with it. Oh, it, it had nothing to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> it had nothing to do with it. Um, some fucking dipshit in Metal Sucks uh, came up with some conspiracy theory about it. It was all horseshit. Oh, it was a conspiracy theory. I like the term. Totally, but... totally, totally, totally. <laughs> I mean, we Indian toured Europe uh, after uh, do Roadburn after From All Purity came out, and we just didn't want to fucking be around each other anymore after that tour. So it was as simple as that. And then uh, Billy was already in Mantis. Dylan was already like doing vocals and stuff with him. And then there was some stupid drama where like Mantis split in half and. Drew and Billy wanted to put a record out before the other guys put out a Lord and Anna's record or something. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. And I wasn't doing anything. They asked me to play bass on the record. I agreed to play bass on the record, but then it got put out there like I joined the band, which was never the case. I literally showed up to the studio, had never heard the stuff. They'd already tracked the guitars and drums. I learned the songs and tracked them as I went. Took those press photos, and that was that. There was a, yeah, that was completely two separate, separate events from each other. Okay. And, but it's funny because like, I, I went back and I listened to some of the Lord Mantis stuff. And I, I think with Dylan's vocals in it, a couple of them, if you just kind of, sort of like, they, they like could have been Indian songs. Like they weren't, they weren't slow, like most of your stuff, but like just having the same vocalist then, uh, there, there were some similarities. Yeah, I mean, Dylan and Billy were, you know, Billy was, was a very distinctive drummer, and uh, Dylan's a very, very distinctive vocalist, so, you know, I, I, I can see how that might come along. I mean, that, I don't really like the Lord Manus record that I played on, but uh, most of their other records, um, you know, I mean, they write some, they, they wrote some really cool, caustic stuff, so. 
I, I got to say, reading your interviews is is fantastic because you you always give such honest answers. Uh, that that I I mean, just having done our interview show, I don't hear a lot. Like you're like, yeah, I went in to record that album, and I didn't think it was going to be any good. <laughs> or, <laughs> I'm a really shitty liar, so we appreciate the honesty. Yeah, specifically, I mean, just, just so I don't uh, keep anybody in the dark, you, the comments were, were from actually from the last record, the From All Purity, um, and, and you didn't say that you didn't like it after it was done, but just going in. Oh, I fucking hated it. <laughs> God, I thought, I thought it was just going to be the biggest pile of shit and biggest waste of time ever. I mean, I, I was wrong. It actually turned out to be my uh, favorite thing I've ever done musically, but it was, uh, I, it was a... We, we, we cut a few things out in the studio. There was a couple extra minutes in uh, in the first song in Rape that I got cut out that really brought that song to life and a couple of, couple of on, at the moment decisions. But yeah, no, it was, uh, I was I was really unhappy with it, but I was, yeah, I was very happy with it by the time we uh, finished mixing. Because I, I think for that album, and, and this is what made me sort of like wonder about that because I, I think with, with Guiltless, I think the, the album is, you know, all the songs definitely like fit on an album where I think Purity, like the, a lot of the tracks are very uh, unique. You know what I'm saying? See, that's, fu that's funny because I always kind of looked at them, uh, actually, you know, for those two albums, completely opposite of how you look at it. Oh, really? Well, as Guiltless got written, I was still in Wolves in the Throne Room when we started writing it, so I was still living out on the West Coast. I just come out here in between Wolves tours, and uh, so we wrote and recorded half of Guiltless, and then wrote and recorded the other half, like a year and a half apart from each other. The first half was written and recorded while I was just coming out here and there when I could, and then the other half was uh, written and recorded uh, right after I moved, you know, about six months after I moved here. So it was... Um, yeah, so, you know, I always felt like, you know, like, guiltless, you know, I ended up being the primary songwriter, and, uh, you know, those guys, Dylan had written everything up to that point, and, you know, from all, and it was said written so sporadically, you know, from all purity, it was all written in the room together the whole time, so, I mean, I'm, I really like both records, I always kind of felt like, uh, uh, from all purity was the more, like, cohesive of the two, but, you know, it's, I mean, perception is everything, so. I, I'm. I'm not. I, I guess I wasn't trying to infer that it wasn't cohesive. Um, well, so I guess I, that, that's, that's, you know, this is all perception and taste. It's not like there's a right or wrong uh, answer or mm. thing about either of them. Sure. You know, it's uh, it's always interesting to hear how other people look at stuff I did because it's you know it's really because you know I, I obviously can't see it that way until I hear it from somebody else. Well, I know there's definitely like the one song is even like it, just in terms of what Indian does, it's it's like a much faster song. Um, I want to say Rhetoric of No was the one yeah. that I'm, I'm thinking of. Yeah. Although it does sort of get very doomy at the end, which, you know, is like what you would, ex you know, expect. Sure. It's what we do, for sure. <laughs> it's what we do. Um, you know, speaking about Wolves... In, in the throne room, I, I one of the things I didn't see in any of your other interviews, which I was kind of curious about, was how uh, you got together with Indian, because like there's very little in Wolves in the Throne Room that I I think would have would have said like, oh, th this guy is like a shoe in for this doom band because they're they're so like black metal and and uh, different. Uh -huh. I actually met the Indian dudes when I was playing in Midian with Mike from Yob. And uh, we, uh, the one U.S. tour we did, uh, we played with Indian here. That was the first time I heard them play. And our first time I heard them at all. And then uh, I met Ron and we hit it off really well. Then we played the last emissions festival down in uh, Austin, Texas on the same tour with them. And then uh, Ron got my number from, uh, I think, from the Mince guys and called me up. He's like, yeah, you know, we want to come out west and maybe Midian could do we did an Indian Midian tour, and we ended up doing that, and uh, then I joined Wolves in the Throne Room shortly after that, and then about six months after I joined Wolves, uh, they asked me if I wanted to come do the next record with them, so I started coming out here, and then, you know, things didn't work out between Wolves and myself, so I, I was living in Olympia on their farm, no friends or anything, because we were just on tour the whole time I was out there, it's like, 
well, fuck, I'm not Wolves anymore. I don't really have any reason to stay in Olympia, and I'm doing this Indian thing, and I'm stoked on it, and I want to, you know, I got to move somewhere, so I moved here. Cool. So, um, I mean, I, I thought it was really interesting that you ended up playing with the guy from YOB, um, but, uh, you know, that it sounded like that that project got really derailed because of that lawsuit that happened. Yeah, I mean, technically, I'm not even supposed to be saying the name of it. You know, oh, shit. Um, but, yeah, no, it was, I mean, the, the, yeah, the, I mean that, that lawsuit took a toll and exasperated some, uh, you know, some personal, some, uh, you know, personality issues amongst everybody. I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, when shit goes bad, all the little stuff starts exasperating itself. And uh, so... Yeah, I mean, whatever, it worked out. Like, you know, I had fun with Wolves, and, uh, you know, I live in Chicago now. And, you know, I'm just playing with Indy, and I'm stoked about that. And, you know, Scott and our uh, merch girl ended up getting married, moving to Idaho, and starting a family together, and they're really happy. So it, worked, man. it all worked out for everybody. Cool. Um, I guess I think you answered one of my other questions, was I, I read something in 2014 that you wrote about, uh, wanting to work with primitive man. So I was kind of like interested in like what actually happened, but it sounds like you, like you're, you're going to do a split with them. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, I mean, 2014 at that point, I, I just like, I just met them, but I was, uh, when that first album of theirs before they signed to relapse, that first album was originally uh, released. I can't recall the name, but on a British label and uh, a forum I used to go on a new metal forum. I used to go on, Someone posted it, and uh, I just loved it, so I ordered it from England, and then they got signed to Relapse shortly after, and yeah, I mean, I love everything that band's done, you know, it's such great music, and they're the fucking nicest people in the world, too, you know, it's, yeah. so it was, uh, you know, it was, you know, yeah, it's, it's been something both bands wanted to do for a while, there's definitely a mutual, mutual admiration and respect, and, you know, some serious friendship there. Cool. Yeah, it's funny they've they've been they haven't been on I, I would love to have them on but we we i think we've interviewed like five or six pe bands who actually have either known them or done splits with them and they, they always have really nice things to say about those guys yeah they're they're they're, they're great they're great It'd be really hard pressed to meet three sweeter guys uh i'll add a question how did um the uh reuniting to play psycho vegas happened in 2017 like what what happened to spur that well you know before billy killed himself we were all the four of us were talking about uh you know getting the band going again it was uh i mean initially i was like fuck these guys i, I mean they were gonna be my friends still i was like i never want to fucking play another note of music with these fucking assholes ever again but you know after a year and then you know it was it wasn't just me that felt that way either um but you know after a year or so and we'd still see each other out drinking go to each other's bars and whatnot we were all still friends but we started talking about it and then uh billy killed himself and then it's like well fuck all right there's that and then um i don't know after some time went on and ron and i were drinking at his bar one night we were pretty drunk and like Fuck, man, that shouldn't be the, you know, Billy's suicide shouldn't be the fucking final note on the band. You know, maybe we still got, maybe we still got something to do and say here. And so we talked to our buddy Noah that Ron and I both worked with on, uh, you know, other, uh, other off, one off projects and, uh, he was into it. So <clears throat> we, we did it. And we were actually supposed to play the first psycho, the first psycho before it was in Vegas. And we ended up having to bail on him like a month before because, you know, we just like the band imploded on itself. So, you know, we kind of felt like we owed them. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we announced we were going to start playing again and then they reached out again pretty quick. And, uh, you know, wanted to make sure that we went I and mean, we did a warm up, an unannounced warm up show opening for Yob here just so we didn't like go on stage with a new drummer like on the fucking main stage of Psycho, you know, get, get at least something to kind of ease into it. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, we did that on an app show. We wanted to make sure that we, uh, you know, went to Psycho first. We felt like we owed them, and, you know, they were really good to us, so. Cool. So, so, so you mentioned Bill's suicide. I mean, um, obviously, you're willing to talk about it and stuff. He was in the band when that happened? Yeah. Yes, he was. 
I mean, that's uh, that's we weren't like playing at that point. We were, you know, talking about it and kind of gearing up to, and you know, that really, uh, I fuck, it really came out of nowhere. So <clears throat> it was, uh, you know, poor. Uh, yeah, it was awful. It was a uh, very unexpected. Yeah. I, 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 there were, you know, the, the, Bill uh, was intoxicated, made a. Uh, a really poor rash decision. It wasn't like there were cries for help or anything like that. Mm. Billy, mm. Billy just made a uh, really bad split decision when he wasn't uh, in his normal state of mind. Mm. It was just uh, 100% out of nowhere. Nobody mm. had an inkling it was coming. Wow. Damn. <sighs> so, yeah, I. Uh... It's so hard to follow that one up. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's fucking awful, man. But I mean, but it is what it is. It just, I mean, yeah, it's been, but uh, this October will be, October 9th will be five years. It's, mm. it's never going to stop sucking. But on the other hand, I mean, yeah, you can't just mope around and be miserable about it forever either. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Billy wouldn't, Billy would be saying some crude ass shit about any of us if we'd done it. So yeah, whatever, you yeah. know. I the guy and the guy, but I can sit around and cry about it for the rest of my life. Sure, sure. Um, I guess uh, we'll talk about some of the other people involved in Indian. Um, it, you know, I think you guys have had the same uh, engineer for the entire run of the band, and I and I think the same artist for the entire run of the band. Yeah, yeah, Sanford Parker's done. Uh, I haven't actually know. I don't actually know if Sanford did the first seven inch or not. That you know, as reported like Jesus, they reported that almost twenty years ago, you know, predates me of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the possible exception of the first seven inch, Sanford's done everything. Okay. Um actually, I mean I haven't looked at that record since those guys gave it to me in like two thousand seven or something. So I I think Scott did the artwork on that, but I can't even be certain about that. But but Scott did, with that possible exception as well, Scott did all the artwork. Um, you know, I mean, Sanford, I mean, you know, fuck, I mean, anyone that's into, like, the heavy underground music's heard something Sanford, heard, probably heard several things and owned several things of Sanford. Yeah. And, and he's a great engineer. He's a great friend. I mean, I've toured with him a million times. Like, Minsk toured with Midian. Uh, Minsk and Storm of Light did a tour on a tour. I played guitar with Storm of Light. Sanford and I were in Mark Mistium together for a few tours. Um, yeah, a great dude, great friend. Uh, Scott's a, a local tattooer. That's how that's how uh, that's how Ron and Dylan met him back in the day. They both have a bunch of tattoos from him. I have a few tattoos from him. Uh, he's still, you know, they're both still friends of ours. And Sanford actually, uh, Ron lives like uh, around the corner from me, and. Uh, he owns a two flat building. Uh, Ron or Sanford actually told a few months ago, was living upstairs from all three of us were all right here for a minute. So, okay. you know, Ron and I are now we're just half a block away from each other and we both own. So we're going to be half a block away from each other for a while. So hope the band and us keep getting along. Yeah. yeah what's the name of Scott's uh, tattoo shop? If you, Can we plug that? Oh yeah. He's at a uh, t- uh, top hat tattoo now in uh, Irving Park. And, or Port, excuse me, in Portage Park here in Chicago, up in the Northwest. Um, fuck, I think that's it. That, that, dude, that, dude's, that dude's been in a few different as long as I've known him. I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while. I mean, you know, just coming out of COVID, you know. I mean, Scott. I mean, I like Scott. He's a friend, but we're we weren't like we're we're not close enough to where we were like hanging out during COVID or anything. Sure. So a lot of people I haven't seen in a couple of years because of that. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I like the artwork a lot. He's a good artist for sure. For sure, it's pretty sick. He has a yeah. unique style. Unique style. Yeah, no, he'll. I mean, whatever we do, you know, the split with Primitive Man, you know, our side of that. The, I mean, whatever else we do, he's going to be doing the artwork. I mean, he's our guy. Cool. I'm sure we'll be recording with Sanford too. So. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Would that, would that be like a seven inch or a twelve inch? Oh, it'll be a twelve inch for sure. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean. I fuck, I don't, I, can't, I don't know if we've written a song short enough to go on a seven inch and five inch. <laughs> That's right, both, both bands are known for long songs, for sure. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, it's, and honestly, too, like, I can't tell you the last time I listened to a seven inch, and I listen to 12 inches all the time. Yeah, yeah. 
You're right. Vintage and I buy them if it's a band I really like, puts it out. But, you know, I just can't, I just don't listen to them anymore. You sure. Know? Sure. I, I, I have a huge seven inch collection and I can't, I don't own a record player, but I can't get rid of them. I don't know. <laughs> it was, it was, me too. And I mean, when I, when I bought my house and moved over here, I sold a decent chunk of my record collection, but it's, I still have so fucking many records. Like I have a whole wall of records still. And it's like, fuck, I don't listen to them that often. You know, it's kind of a bummer, but I can't bring myself to part with them either. Yeah. Now, for what, you know, for, I mean, because it's good or, you know, some connection to it or before sure. COVID, uh, I DJ a DJ bar, I do, I do a, a DJ classic country, some local bars here and there, and I'm like, no, oh, fuck, maybe I'll do that again, you know, it's an easy time <laughs> to drink some. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I have a lot of fucking records. God, mm -hmm. I have a lot of records. Yeah. Used to be awesome, now it feels like an anchor. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to, uh, I'm just going through my notes in here. Uh, I, th I thought it was funny. I, I saw that, that, uh, a couple people asked you why the band was called Indian and you weren't sure. Did you ever find an answer to that? Oh, it's, um, yeah. Um, Ron and Dylan, um, when they first started the band, it was, uh, I don't think they really had intentions to start something as serious as it became, although they ended up taking it seriously pretty early on. But when they started, none of them had really played instruments. Mm. You know, Ron was actually the drummer when the band started. Mm. Okay. And their buddy Ray um, was the bass player. And uh, Ray uh, I either fell off or was pushed off a uh, four, three or four story balcony Whoa. Um, and died. Oh my God. And oh, um, the Indian name came from uh, the three of them with uh, Ron's sister. They used to go down to New Orleans on a fairly regular basis, hang out and party. And they were at the, uh, they were uh, betting on some horse races or something. And there was a, uh, a horse named Indian Charlie. And that was the one that Ray picked. So they kind of called the band Indian just kind of as a nod to Ray because mm. you know, he died or been yep. killed. So. Jesus, yeah, okay. So yeah, that was that was years before I met them. That was, I mean, that was before even the first seven inch. I mean, that was God. I mean, he, he must have died probably twenty years ago, twenty mm. years ago, like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's that that's the story of the name. There's you know no real significance to it or anything. It's mm -hmm. uh, I was touring Europe. Some people would ask me about it. You know, the Europeans already a they're working with it. You know. A language that's the second or third, sometimes third language to them, and then yeah, they're already so earnest and straightforward. And it's like I'm trying to explain it, you, you know, that but, but you know, they, they just don't have the, enough of the grasp of the English language and then like syntax issues and whatnot. Where I'm like, it's really, it doesn't, it's not like about the Native Americans, it's not about like, it's not, there's nothing political about it, it's just yeah. it's a stupid name for a stupid band. That's really all there is. To, and, you know, but it wouldn't it'd get lost in the translation or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, you keep it, and they wouldn't give up. I'm like, no, no, you must explain this to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to explain it any simpler. You must explain this to me. I can see someone in a Euro accent be like, no, you must explain this to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially like fucking like the Germans, like, you know, they, especially the Eastern Germans, they're so like very strict. And yeah. Strict and, yeah. Like, you know, they don't mince their fucking words at all, which I think yeah. is awesome, but it's still like, yes, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm sorry, Brim. That's that's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything, really. Um, what One of your other sort of frank comments that keeps coming up is that you don't like recording, which I think is is. Oh, yeah. Funny. Not a fan. And is, is that just because you just prefer the live performance or, or, or is it really just, just the recording just is like awful? And, and what is it about the record, re recording that turns you off? I, I, I mean, I, do you play music? Do you play I, music? I play we music. Both, we yes. both do. Yeah, so you guys have recorded before, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, you know, you know, you're like on day six or seven in the studio and you've played those songs so many fucking times and you've heard them so many fucking times. 
10 seconds skipping at a time. And yeah. By the, by, you know, halfway through the mix, I'm like, I should just cut my fucking hands off so no one would ever have to hear this fucking garbage. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I get fatigued on the, I get fatigued, I guess, is what it comes Yeah, to listening me. fatigue, for sure. Listening, like, listening back over and over. Yeah. yeah. I get that, that. I get that, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, I mean, that's really, that's really as simple as that. It's just like, you know, I just get sick of hearing it. I get sick of playing it. Sure, sure. They're early, you know, they're long days. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just, you know, it's like, you know, you get there, it's like, fuck, I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm gonna go to a bar and just like get fallen down drunk. I don't know if I just wanna like crawl into bed and stick a screwdriver in my ear or something. Like, <laughs> just, like fucking fatigued and yeah. yeah. I think I, I think when we recorded when I recorded some of my earlier stuff, I, I was a teenager, so we were fucking broke. And and so it was like we went in and we had like literally three days to do it and you know, you, you, you got to, you got to play it maybe twice, three times if you were lucky. And then it was like, you just ran out of cash, you know, that was it. That yeah. was it. So like, and then, yeah. and then everything else has been like home recordings and stuff, you know, because I'm not doing it seriously anymore. Eric's a little bit more serious than I am. The home recordings though, you can put, you know, you don't, you don't have to, you, you, if, if you get sick of it, it's just like, you just put it in the, you know, you come back to it in, in, in a while. No, I mean, a buddy and I are uh, doing a, I've been uh, doing a death metal band that uh, it didn't work out with the dude that was playing drums. So we're uh, recording with uh, that Easy Drummer program, just kind of get some demos going. And so that's pretty easy and casual. Like, you know, we hang out, you know, he's got like a one year old baby. So the baby's like asleep two doors open. But it's like, you know, the guitars are so quiet. So your ears don't get beat up so much. And it's all just these drums, you know, we're just, you know, that's fun. Like okay. I was gonna okay, so you don't hate that, but it, it's the studio stuff. Yeah, which I means like you know, ninety five percent of the recording stuff I've done. And same thing like when it, the first band I, the first time I ever recorded, you know, I was say eighteen or nineteen, and like, I mean, we didn't we went and recorded like forty five minutes worth of music and mixed it all in like one like fourteen or fifteen hour marathon day. I remember, I remember driving back home from the studio like an hour and a half. Or not even driving because I didn't have my license yet. One of my buddies was driving and we we're listening to it over and over. This is the coolest fucking thing that's ever happened. But that charm wore off pretty quick. So, yeah. I mean, especially once I started being in bands, I got kind of known, you know, got enough of a budget to go spend a week in the studio or whatever. And it's like, and like, fuck that first Wolves in the, the only Wolves in the Throne Room album I played on. Be like, crashed at the studio like it was just we were just there all the time it's like mm. oh, God, so worn out by all of this of course of course but, yeah i don't know i mean plenty of other people who are into it it's whatever just you know i, I definitely prefer playing live for sure are, are you gonna do some are you you know i i I hate to say covid's over i've had some people say covid's over and i'm like mm, i'm not so sure about that but uh, at least the live shows are opening up again. Are, are, are you going to do shows? Um, is your new drummer planning on learning some of the old stuff from Purity or Guiltless or? Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I mean, we jammed, we just jammed on a couple of the songs from all Purity and it was mainly just like, eventually we want to have them learn a set for the old material, but also, you know, just some sort of familiar point for us to both start from kind of a deal to just kind of play with each other a bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, it's, um, and we don't have any plans. I mean, even like towards the end of when the band was active with Billy, we were only playing shows like once or twice a year locally, like, and I mean, I, you know, I mean, we're, we're not going to be playing anytime soon. It's, uh, if, uh, reopening and, uh, COVID is really not over, it'll get be found out way before we get around booking a show. So we'll, you know, we'll see, but yeah, it's definitely, we're, I mean, we're still planning on playing, you know, locally here and there, and we're, you know, still hoping to do some fly dates here and there. Some festivals are interested in having us again. Cool. I mean, okay, so not out of the question for sure. No, no definitely not. Definitely not. Just, uh, you know, be a very, uh, very small part of the band. It's said it's, you know, a couple of times a year. Okay, you mentioned only playing a couple years uh, times a year. I guess that was towards the end because you you guys went on tour with High on Fire, no? Yeah, well, yep. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, 
No, you know, we never know how long they have raised on tour, but you know, that was uh that's cool for them with high on fire. I mean, they were in the best of shape on that tour, but I mean they played a couple of cool shows and had a lot of fun with them. I, I love the honesty, like they're they're just <laughs> what, what... I had plenty of people saw those shows. It's not it's not like a it's not a secret. secret or anything. <laughs> it was uh I mean we had some fun with them. I mean my most vivid memory of that tour was uh we were all we played on the old strip in Vegas. We were all in the same hotel and we decided we were gonna go out on the town and we're uh, hanging out downstairs waiting. We were waiting. Nat had already come down. We we're waiting on a couple of the other guys and I was it's like drinking a beer, playing like that video blackjack or whatever that you have that's like in the bar top. And uh, Matt comes up and his gravelly ass Matt Pike voice like, so, oh, you know, you're wasting your time. Let me show you how it's done in Vegas. Fucking pulls out $200 and walks to the pie gal table. Comes back less than a minute later. Lost it all. <laughs> that's right, man. Uh, you show me how it's done. Oh, uh, no. Damn it. Thankfully, drinking and everything was really cheap on the old strip. So, because yeah, when we went to God, when we played that Psycho Vegas Fest, I was uh, expecting the drinking was going to be like, you know, you know, just like normal bar prices, but you know, they want you to gamble, which is why you get free drinks when you gamble. I'm like, oh, I just, you know, I just, I just want a can of PBR. I'm like, oh, that'll be eight dollars. Like, fuck, all right, I guess. I mean, but I'm not going to gamble. I don't care. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I've been going to the store. I went to the store and buy beer for the hotel. And even at the beer, even the beer at the store was expensive. It was insane. Mm. Still a lot of fun, but yeah, I barely remember going to my room every night. So I guess it all sure. worked out. But sure. Um, so how often? How often are you playing? Uh, do do you are you are you doing like writing remotely or anything, or do you do you just show up with written stuff or what, what's sort of the plan to, to write the new material? Um, I mean, it's a Joe and I are, you know, mess around on guitar at home usually and then, you know, show a bit of space, whoever, you know, I've got a couple of riffs I've been kicking around that we jammed on with a couple of the drummers we played with and then, you know, we're, and really it's just going to kind of see what happens. They're not really a set in stone definitive plan or anything. It's, uh, yeah, kind of, Whatever happens, whatever makes something happen. So. Sure. Um, okay, speaking, I guess back to the to being honest about things in interviews, I, I you've mentioned uh, that you didn't necessarily get along with the guy, Sean, that used to be in the band. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I did think it was very odd that, that, that you had a member of Indian that was just solely like his, his job description well, you know, it was not an, it was just noise. Yeah. And I, I wonder how somebody becomes, a, 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 you know, a, the noise maker, you know? Um. And, and what, what does that entail exactly? Like, and I don't mean to talk crap about him. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure this is a water under the bridge and all, but I, it was just kind of curious, like, wh what you do when your job is noise. I mean, uh, Sean's setup was like, he had like a synthesizer and some, uh, you know, a bunch of different like distortion, delay, like a bunch of weird pedals, a couple of synthesizer things and a mixer that kind of run into itself and whatnot. And um, I, I don't know, never knew entirely what all his whole setup was. And it was kind of, you know, fluid, like, I mean, it, it changed like time went on and whatnot. Um, he got the role because uh, the band like started doing uh, noise stuff, like having noise stuff in the studio. Like Sanford did some noise stuff for him on the records, like electronic noise, same kind of deal, like synthesizer noise and whatnot. And uh, they had this other dude doing it the first time I saw them play. I can't remember his name anymore. He was out before I got involved with the band. But, uh, you know, Sean was always like driving those guys on tours. And he was involved with Emperor Cab, so he got them the whole Emperor back line. And, so since he was already kind of along for the ride anyways, they had him start doing it. And then when I joined the band, uh, I was like, well, fuck, man, you should do it on the record. And, you know, well, you know you're part of the band. I mean, you're there doing all this shit with us. So, you know, be in the pictures with us, be credited. And, I mean, the noise is like, that's 
you know, it's an important part of our music. I mean, you know, especially, you know, ironically, we kicked him out right before uh, From All Purity, and then that ended up having more noise than any of the other Indian records did. So, and there's a whole song that's nothing but noise. But Yeah, that, that last, the later one. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, we, you know, we just did it without him. I mean, I did most of it. Oh, my buddy Mark, who I play in Bloody Minded with, and uh, he sings in a band called Anatomy of Habit from here. Um, he uh, he did some noise on it, too. And then live, I I ended up, I wanted to be another noise guy. No one else wanted to add somebody to the band. And have to pay for the extra plane ticket to Europe. So uh, I ended up uh, actually have a modular synthesizer, and I ended up uh, doing some research and finding some ways to rig a few pedals up to it so I can control it with my feet and just repatch it between songs. So it's a, you know, sometimes it gets a little busy trying to keep track of everything I'm doing on stage, you know, but eh, it is easier than having an extra person along. Uh, that being said, uh, when we played Psycho Vegas, when we played uh, uh, Maryland Death Fest, uh, Ethan from Primitive Man did noise for us instead. I was going to mention that. I remember seeing him in the photos for doing the noise. Yeah, yeah. See, I mean, he does noise on the Primitive Man stuff, and he has yeah. his mini blessings project he does. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, we were like, well, fuck, we're all going to be there, dude. And he, he was stoked. We were, we were all stoked to collaborate together, so. Well, was he credited with, like, playing a telephone? I remember seeing that somewhere, <laughs> telephone or something. Yeah, like a telephone mic. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, I think that was that, that was uh, for this April Fool's joke he did. That's um, right, the April Fool's, yeah. Yeah, where he said he was, he was putting Primitive Man to move to Chicago and play telephone for India. That's it, that's it, yeah. He told me about it. His bandmates were kind of like, thought it was stupid, but whatever. I was like, <laughs> on the Indian Instagram page and like, Added him as a member of the band, posted about it. And like, yeah. I'm surprised how many people actually believed it. <laughs> that's funny as hell. And that's a good April Fool's joke. It fooled a lot of people. That's funny. It did. That's, I, was, I was just blown away. It's like, wow, people are taking this really seriously. Like, <laughs> I mean, fucking, they really think you didn't put Primitive Man, which is like 10 times as big as India, to play with us, to play telephone with us. Like, <laughs> I'm real. All right, cool. That's funny. It's funny stuff. Uh, I think you've touched upon it a couple of times. I, um, I, I'd be remiss to ask you what, what other side projects you've been involved in that I might not have known about or might not be listed on Metal Archives or whatnot. Like, do you, do you have anything to plug? Any other stuff that you've been working on? Um, well, there's that death metal band I've been doing with my buddy, Gene. Uh, he uh, played, he was... He was in a, he played guitar in a hardcore band from here called The Killer. I don't know if, uh, I was familiar with the name. It wasn't really, it was, you know, it wasn't really the a type of scene I was really into, but I guess they were kind of big in the hardcore scene. Um, and our buddy Dan, who this is Dan's first band, he's doing vocals. Uh, we're kind of, we don't really have a name yet. We only have a few songs that we've demoed. And then um, I'm actually playing pedal steel in a country band as well. Oh, cool. All right. Cool. And, well, I'm kind of, it's, I'm terror. I'm badly playing pedal steel. It's a, it's a really fucking hard instrument. I'm not sure what pedal. What is pedal steel? It's like a, on your lap and a slide and your. Oh, picking. okay. I'll show you. Let's see here. Uh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. a pedal steel. Oh, yeah. okay. So you can see there's like those pedals down there at the bottom, and then there's those levers on the bottom. Um, all those bend bend certain strings. So yeah. You, Steel bar on the top. It's ten strings and it's tuned like. I mean, it's tuned to an open E kind of, but it's got like two X. It's got two ninths, a flatted seventh, a couple other things in there. It's ten strings and it's almost like semi-chromatic, except for the top two strings are. Mm -hmm. And then a big steel bar because uh, you know there's no frets, there's lines to let you mm -hmm. go the And then uh, there's three pedals on the left foot side. Or minimum, that's like the standard setup. They can, there can be more. Mm -hmm. They bend certain strings and you play them together. To like, you know, like say you got your bar on the five and you pick the right strings, that's like an A chord. Then you push down the A and B pedal and hit those same strings and it's a uh, D chord, it's the fourth. Okay. Uh, then there's a knee lever on either side of your knees and those bend, those bend other strings, some up or some down. And then you work a volume pedal with your right foot to uh, control sustain and such. It's like flying a fucking helicopter. 
That, that's interesting. Actually, I think, yeah, uh, the, you're like the second uh, me like metal musician that was also doing country. If you remember the people in Haunter that we interviewed, Chris, were doing country, traditional. Yeah, country I, haven't, I, haven't, I hadn't gotten a chance to check that out. Yeah. And, and I think I said in that interview, and I'll say it again here, like, I, I, I feel like I spent like the first 30 years of my life just walking around saying I hate country music. Um, I think you were only into pop country, Chris. No, that no, was no, probably no. Is. First pop off, I, Okay, let's let's let just. Keep <laughs> record. I still hate pop country. That is the type of country that I I hated when I said I hated country music. Yeah. But it, like when you you know if you listen to some, I, I I'll have to credit the like the YouTube algorithm for like starting to give me some blues stuff. You know that was based. Maybe I was listening to a little bit too much Clutch or something like that. And then I get, you know, started getting more blues stuff in there. And, and if you have that metal aesthetic, like some of the blues and really dark Southern country, dark Gothic, Southern Gothic stuff, it, it really is good. And, and, uh, and if you like metal and, and Doom even too, I, like you should love some of that blues stuff, you know? Sure. That, my, my own opinion about like blues and, and some of that just dark, dark, country stuff no i mean i love like acoustic blues stuff like uh skip james is incredible you know he was like he, he uh tuned to a minor tuning which is pretty uh uncommon for blues guys uh, i mean robert johnson of course i'm not like i'm not a blues guy by any means like i'm not like super knowledgeable but you know there's the stuff i like like I said skip james uh uh mississippi fred mcdowell john hurt you know there's there's some, there's some really good cool stuff out there for it, you know. Having, you know, having it be a little darker, you know, is like a requirement for you to be into it. There's definitely some of that for sure. I mean, the country stuff. I mean, I'm like, I like most any of it from like the, you know, from the beginning of recorded music up into the '70s, unless it was like this really overly schmaltzy poppy '60s and '70s stuff. But like, that there was a lot of good stuff in the '60s and '70s, even in the early '80s. I mean. And like, I mean, like, Dwight Yoakam, for example. Dwight Yoakam's stuff was great. It took me a while to get into him. I mean, I have to say, you know, I was my first 20 years of my life, I ran around talking about how much I hated country music. Yeah, I grew up uh, by Bakersfield, so, you know, all the fucking, you know, all the rednecks that were kicking my ass. I said, when I was in high school, I hated it too. But then I moved away from home, and about a year later, it's like, Fuck, you know, and that's like, a, you know, it's a Buck Owens, it's like Hank Williams Sr., Johnny Cash, my Willie Nelson, I'm like, yeah, fuck, I can get into this. Mm -hmm. Like that Garth Brooks bullshit, all those fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, just kind of branched from there, but, so yeah, so for now it's like, I will see my country band. Cool. Very cool. Did, did, does your country project have a name? Uh, it does. It's called, um... Uh, Hoover and Harley and the Boys. And it's mostly covers. We had a couple of originals. We haven't recorded or anything. And those guys have actually been doing it for a while. I'm the most recent addition to the band. Uh, my buddy uh, was at a party and uh, ran into the, the singer, the main, the, one of the singers in the band and was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm in this country band. We're trying to find a steel guy. He's like, oh, well, fuck, my buddy just got a pedal steel. And it's, you know, pedal steel is kind of like upright bass, like, if you if you even just since they're so uncommon and expensive, if you just owning one is like nine tenths of the qualification. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So, but you know, it's you know, it's I mean, playing with them has been really helpful with me learning too. Saying the first practice, I felt like it was just like those. Uh, um, yeah, the, there's that view, those YouTube videos of like X band shreds or whatever, where it's just like right dang. What I felt like the whole time I was playing, but you know, it's gotten better because you know, it's playing with other people's, you know, the best kind of practice you can do. So, yeah, yeah. I joined right before COVID. We played one show. We were supposed to play a show like the day before America shut down. Mm. We canceled because one of the guys got scared, you know, and still no one knew what exactly what it was. And then yeah. shut down. I just started playing with them again. And we just played our uh, first show back last Thursday. So, Cool. Yeah. Cool. And I guess play sitting down and my amp's only this tall. It's fucking great. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Not as much to move around. Oh, but. yeah. It's like, you know, going from an amp taller than me to an amp below my knees. It's, oh, it's wonderful. That's cool. Cool. 
It's good for gigs. Uh, I guess, yeah, any, anything else you want to plug? Or I guess we're coming to the end of the time right now. More or less. I mean, that's pretty much all I do besides work and hang out at home. So Cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll wrap it up. I, I think I'm also at the end of my notes. I have like a ton, but we're 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 all good. I think I, I'm I'm super excited that you're you're you know you're not giving up and you're back and you got a new drummer. Um, I I love the old stuff. Uh, last couple albums, um, really great. Um, not just because you were on them, but you know all the stuff is. <laughs> It's good. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, Thank you. you know, Thank you for doing the interview. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. No, it's uh, my pleasure. I really appreciate the fact that y'all, uh, well, I mean, that y'all want to talk to me or care about the band. You know, that's, that's awesome. It still uh, never ceases to amaze me that people like what, what Indian does. So <laughs> that's uh Thank you. Okay, cool. cool. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Bye, everybody.